Welcome back guys, this is Rob with Tech, this is a continuation from Ubuntu Server Part 1. We're going to be setting up Portainer and two Docker networks. If you don't know what Portainer is, it's a web management interface that lets you manage containers easier. First of all, we're going to jump back to Google and we're going to do um, Portainer CE Docker install. And Portainer has their own installation guide as well. But I'm going to show you how to do how to convert the Docker run. So the one we're going to do is this one right here, the Docker. This will be Docker CE. Uh, Docker CE with, uh, with Docker on Linux. So we're going to go ahead and copy this command. But before we run it, there's a website that we that I use often. It's Compose Sizer, I think it's called like that. Compose. Yeah, so this one, Compose your Iser. So what this one does is it allows you to copy and paste. So you can just do Control A to select all of that and then remove it and then Control V. Now it gives you the YAML file. So here in the YAML file, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the part of the service here like this. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Now I'm going to go ahead go back to, to my SSH connection. Now here in data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Docker folder. So make directory Docker, and then I'm going to CD in Docker. And I'm going to create a make directory. This is where I'm going to put all my container data. So make directory app data. Now I'm also going to do a, I'm going to do Vim. And then this one's going to be called compose.yaml. So you do Vim. So this is going to create a file in here. Now I'm just going to right click and this is going to add our pertainer YAML. Now the only thing you have to change here is this pertainer data. This is not going to work like this. Well, it probably would start, but remember we just created a folder for this. Now, if you're not from sure where to get this path, I mean, we can just do escape colon right quick. So WQ, you can just do, so let's do CD app data and then you can do uh, PWD. And that would give you the whole path. So this is what we're going to need. So I'm just going to copy this like this. Just highlight it. Uh, the good thing about putting anything you highlight, it actually gets copied. So I'm just going to open up that file again. And you're going to see uh, we need to do a uh, Vim. But then I guess I'm not going to confuse you. So CD and then do dot dot. So you can go back and then do Vim compose. You can always tab. Now here, I'm just going to go ahead and right click. I did that wrong so let me get out so every time you make changes and you don't want to save them you're going to do a colon q and then do an exclamation mark so that's just going to exit without saving so the reason i did it wrong is because i i removed the p i left the p behind so i'm going to do i for insert right click again and then i'm going to do forward slash and i'm going to call this portainer and then forward slash again now this basically saying is that we're going to put our our Portainer that portainer underscore data is going to be created on this data file. This is the data, the hard drive that we just set up. This is the folder we call data, and then this would be Docker with the Docker folder that we have, and then this is the app data where I want to put all the data for my containers. So that's basically what this is. Now, if you don't have a second drive and you're doing this on just a one SSD, one hard drive, right? You can instead of doing data, you can actually leave it at home, or you can create for such data and just use your current um like or you can use your home directory you don't have to uh, set up uh, another external hard drive for this so now i'm just going to do escape and i'll do colon wq now if we go back to ll we're going to see here app data so i'm going to see the app data or i'm going to do ll and then app data so we don't jump into that. You're going to see that we don't have anything in there. So now what we're going to do, make sure that we are in the directory with the compose.yaml. We're going to do sudo docker compose up dash D. Now this way it should do is it's going to open up this compose.yaml. It's going to go ahead and create portainer for us. So let's see if that it happens. There it is. It started pulling it.
All right, so now we're gonna jump to our browser and to get to Pertainer, you're gonna do 10.0.0. Well, this is gonna be the IP address of your Ubuntu. So then you're gonna do colon and then it's a 9443. Now it's gonna say that it's HTTP. So just go to the front of it, do HTTPS colon four slash four slash. So now you're gonna see that it's gonna ask you to create an account. I'm gonna go ahead and create that real quick. All right, so the reason that we want pertainers is just because it's easier to manage. So we have a Ubuntu server and it's CLI. We don't have a GUI. I mean, you can install it with a GUI, but in, in many cases, it's going to be a headless host. So this allows us to control, I mean, to manage our container. So if we go here, um, I think you can just click environments, click on local. All right, I think it's a uh, home. Yeah, home. You click home and then here on local containers you're going to see that we have two containers this first one this is the hello world this is the one that we were testing the docker instance see make sure it was working and then the second one is a pertainer one and another thing that i want to show you here is because uh, i do a lot of docker videos or a lot of docker other docker applications but using uh, open media vault um i do have a, a github where i post the yaml files you can actually go in here you can click stacks and go ahead and create a new stack you can name it whatever you want and you can just go ahead and copy and paste those yaml from my github i'll post that in the description so you guys can can see it uh, basically the only thing you would have to modify would be the compose there's a, a part where it says compose data file something around those lines and this is where you want to link it to your correct uh, data directory so i'm going to go back to dashboard containers another thing i want to show you is I like to create two networks. I like to create a Mac VLAN network so I can set up certain containers to use a, a, a IP address within my network. And then I like to set up a proxy network. And it's just another network, but the, since it's a, why well, the reason I call it proxy is because when you create a proxy host, I mean, uh, Nginx, Nginx proxy manager, um, you can, it's easier to link to your container so you can use uh, a URL instead of their IP addresses. So how we're going to do that first, I want to show you here in pertainer, you go down, you're going to see that it's like a random network. It's a Docker default, right? So it's on the set 172.18. So what we're going to do is going to go here on networks and we're going to go ahead and add a network. You don't have to do this. It's just, that's the way I do it. Uh, so I'm going to call this a uh, proxy network. Now the driver, I'm going to leave it as bridge. I'm just going to create a random subnet, which is going to be this 172.168.1.0 and forward slash 24. Now for the range, this is how many DHCP uh, addresses you want in it. I'm just going to create it uh, with the, the whole subnet. So 172.168.1.0 four slash 24 actually this is a one I, I believe and then this is the 172 the 168.1.1 this is uh gonna be the gateway that you want to use for this so i'm going to use the one dot one then that should be it for this one so let's go ahead and save it create network okay i think the range is wrong so here it's going to be zero there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a Mac VLAN that, that this networks are not going to be the Mac VLAN is not going to be used on this. Uh, but in the future, as uh, you or you, if you stumble upon my Piho video, you're going to see that I use Mac VLANs and this is where it's going to be beneficial. Um, before here, we're going to need the, the host, uh, the interface that we have, the default interface. So we're going to go back to Putty. You can do an IPA. And you can see the one here, the one with the IP address minus ENS 18. So this is important. Uh, I'm going to go back here. We're going to first, we need to create the driver. So I'm going to call this Mac VLAN. This is just going to be the driver. So Mac VLAN and then here ENS 18. This is based on your interface subnet. This is going to be your subnet. So minus this 10.0 network gateway. This is going to be the IP address of your router. Now. IP range, I'm not going to specify that because I usually use statics when I set up containers uh, with a, with this Mac VLAN. Now, this is, like I said, this is just going to be like a driver. So you're going to do uh, create the network. 
Now we're going to do create network again. And now we're going to specify local network. And here's where we're going to attach our Mac VLAN. So we're going to go to creation. You're going to specify this Mac VLAN that we just created. We're going to go ahead and create network. So now we have those two networks, proxy network, local network. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a uh, pertainer in this network. So you can see that, that this proxy network is a 172.168.1.0. We're going to put the uh, pertainer in there. So one way that we can do it is you can either go here on containers pertainer and you can just actually just click here and change it to the proxy network and then delete this one after you add it. But the way I'm going to show you guys to do it is we're going to go back to let me click containers. We're going to go back to putty and we're going to do a Docker or sudo Docker stop portainer. And then we're going to remove portainer. Now we're going to do vim compose. Now here we're going to go ahead and add the network. The way we're going to do that is here on, on after this name, right? You can just do network with the S networks. Then you're going to call it whatever you want. So portainer dash network colon. And then here, I think you can give this blank. Now you're going to go to the far bottom. You're going to enter. And now here, make sure you go all the way back. Right here at the edge, you're going to do networks colon. Now enter, and then you're going to call this the, you're going to have to say the same name that we have here. So we can just highlight it here on the top, right click. Now name, we're going to call it whatever. So this is going to be our proxy network. So we're going to do proxy dash network. Now we're going to specify network. Now we're going to specify here. Make sure that the syntax is correct, like the same way that I have it external okay so this basically is telling you that you're gonna add portainer to this you're creating this portainer network now we're, and then we need to specify this portainer network which is here right here portainer network now we're gonna tell it use proxy network proxy network this is the network that we created on the portainer itself right and then external we're just telling it it's already exists Go ahead and use that. So now I'm going to do escape colon WQ. Now we're going to do again sudo docker uh, compose up dash D. If you don't put the D, it's going to run and it's going to take over your screen. You're going to have to control, control C to get out of that. So D is just detach mode. Now it started. Now we go into, we go ahead and refresh. You should be able to add, sign in again with the same credentials. This is not going to delete that. Now you check the local, we go containers, and we check pertainer. You're going to see that it's now on the proxy network. You see, so the reason I like to do it like this, like I was saying, is like whenever you create an Nginx proxy manager, any proxy, um, you would add that proxy manager in the same network, like let's say per proxy network. So then you can start accessing your all your services like that now the i'm not going to use the mac vlan in this example but in case that you stumble upon that um, you would have to you would link the local network and then you can specify a, a static now that's all for the pertainer now what i want to show you is how to create an smb share so this will be all for part two in part three we're going to be going over setting up an smb share or also known as a network share we will also be setting up ACLs to manage our file permissions. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. You don't want to miss the next video. Any question, drop it off in the comments. If you watch to the end of the video, I greatly appreciate you.